Today I'm going to talk about one of the questions I've gotten a lot since I've started doing the videos in my Jayco Pinnacle series. And the question is, is the Jayco Pinnacle a good choice for full-time RVing? In other words, if you're planning to live year-round in your RV or travel the country in your RV, is the Pinnacle or even the sister product for that matter, the North Point, are they good choices for full-time RV living, especially with all the other brands out there? And later in this video, I'll talk exclusively about cargo carrying capacity and how it relates to a rig being well suited for full time living, along with real world numbers on how much everything in my rig weighs. And I'll even pull out a spreadsheet. So if you like that kind of stuff, stay tuned. But my goal is to make this video as helpful as possible for folks interested in full timing in an RV such as the Pinnacle. Now, just to be clear, I, myself personally, I do not live in my Jayco Pinnacle full-time. I bought it for recreational use, and I probably spent an average of 45 days or so out of the year in it, you know, during trips and family vacations. But I spent a lot of time researching it before purchasing. You know, it's my fifth RV, and over time, I've become more particular about the features and the options. So, that being said, the format for today's video is going to be a list of pros and cons specifically aimed to answer the question, is the Jayco Pinnacle, or the North Point for that matter, a good choice for full-time RVing? And in case you haven't seen my other videos, I'll just mention this again. I am not affiliated with Jayco as of this recording here today. I'm just a regular Jayco customer and owner like anyone else. So these are all my personal opinions, and I'm just putting this information out there to be helpful to other prospective buyers. All right, so let's begin to talk about the pros. What makes the Jayco Pinnacle a great choice for full-time RV living? And the first one is going to be the 120 pounds of propane capacity. So if you get the generator prep option or the own-in generator option, Jayco is one of the few RV brands that gives you three 40-pound propane tanks for a total of 120 pounds of propane. Now, if you're going to full-time in an RV, that of course means you're gonna be living in the RV during the winter months. Now, I know some folks try to go south to Florida in the winter, and I think there's even a nickname for that, but I imagine some folks don't have that option. Perhaps you end up staying where temps still hover around or below freezing. And if you've ever used your RV's furnace, then you know just how much propane you can go through in a short period of time. So having that 120 pounds of propane is extremely useful so that you don't have to refill the propane as often. You know, with other RVs that have less capacity, such as 60 or 80 pounds of propane, it basically becomes a limitation potentially is then you're having to fill up more often or you're limiting where you can stay based on the outside temperatures, you know, for fear of running out of propane. Now, as I mentioned, I don't full-time in my rig, but I'd imagine if you're completely stationary for the winter, maybe you could even just get a giant external 100 pound propane tank. So maybe it's not as big of a pro as I think, but in the end, I still think it's unique that Jayco does the 120 pounds of propane. And in my opinion, that makes it more ideal for full-time RVing. Now on that note, let's talk about the insulation in the Pinnacle, which of course is going to impact your camping in both the warm and the cold climates. And I'd say it's overall average or slightly above average on the insulation front. I mean, if you read Jayco's marketing material or really any brand for that matter, you might be convinced that they have the best insulation package in the business. But I really think it's perhaps just above average on the Pinnacle and definitely consistent though within the price point. I mean, Jayco advertises how their product has been zero degree tested. And really a lot of that has to do with the furnace constantly pumping hot air into the unit. I don't want to be too harsh on Jayco as they do in some ways more than other brands, but to be blunt, you know, the insulation techniques in the RV industry are kind of mediocre across the board. I mean, I think all brands leave a lot of room for improvement on the insulation front, especially when it comes to air sealing. And in my opinion, there's really not one RV brand, at least in the Pinnacle's price point, that really stands out at doing, you know, an exceptionally superior job overall on the insulation front. And specifically on the Pinnacle and the North Point, I think the underbelly is probably the weakest point in terms of insulation. Now I did another video on this already, so I'll put a link up for it, but basically I think there's a lot of room for improvement the way the underbelly is put together and sealed up, not just on the Pinnacle for that matter, but a lot of other brands. So it's very leaky from the factory in my opinion. It should be air sealed and probably could even have a little bit more insulation. But the good news is you can do the air sealing yourself and in the end, I've had no issues whatsoever camping in temps below freezing. Next pro is the riding gear or the handling package. 
And this is one example where I actually think the Pinnacle shines pretty well, particularly with the Moride LRE 4000 suspension, along with the heavier shackles and the wet bolts that Jayco employs. I also like how it has a nice beefy stabilizer bar running between the two equalizers. That's kind of unique. It just seems very robust overall, and it really delivers a smooth ride. Now, this is important if you're full-timing and moving about frequently, is it's gonna make your overall experience on the road more enjoyable. You know, it's gonna be less bumpy, and that goes both for you in your tow vehicle, but also the components and your personal belongings inside your RV. Now, the only thing I'd probably change personally, this is just my personal opinion, would be to upgrade the Goodyear E-rated tires that Jago puts on to perhaps Goodyear H or G-rated tires. Another pro, the 102-inch wide body construction. So most RVs are gonna be eight feet across or 96 inches, but oftentimes as you go higher in the price points, you'll see more and more brands featuring the wide body construction. Now the Pinnacle is my first experience owning a wide body RV. Every RV I've owned before has been eight foot across, but I really think that extra six inches or so, it really makes a big difference in the end. And so as I imagine living full time in an RV, I think that extra six inches would really help make it feel roomier. And you know, in terms of fitting into sights and towing, being larger with that extra six inches of width, it doesn't seem to really make it any more difficult to navigate or handle, at least in my opinion. Next pro I'll mention is the standard prep features that Jayco incorporates like the dishwasher prep and the washer dryer prep. Now I get that pretty much any fifth wheel nowadays is going to advertise the washer dryer prep, but not as many are going to consistently feature the dishwasher prep. And after installing a Fisher Paykel dishwasher in my Pinnacle several months back, I'm absolutely sold on having a dishwasher in your RV. I mean, between the benefits of water conservation and then of course convenience, I'd almost say it's a must have if you're full timing. Now I did a separate video on that, so I'll put a link up for it. But again, if you're full timing in an RV, I think those basic conveniences are definitely nice to have. So another pro for the Pinnacle. All right, and yet another pro I'll mention is the overall finishes, particularly here in the Pinnacle. I mean, I think the designers for both the Pinnacle and really the North Point too, they got so many things right. You know, between the contrasting colors and the blend of materials used throughout, you know, I think there's so much to look at and enjoy visually, yet it all ties together so very nicely. So in my opinion, it's one of the best looking interiors overall in a production-based fifth wheel, period. And I realize that's my subjective opinion, but if you're full-timing in an RV, you want it to look nice and feel more like a home. Jayco does things like wooden casing around the windows, chair rails, and really there's just a lot of visual appeal to make it feel more like home. Next pro I'll mention, and this is a pretty big one, and that is that Jayco actually advertises that they warranty their units for full-time living. Now, I don't have personal experience dealing with this, but apparently a lot of other brands allegedly will deny you warranty service on their units if they discover that you live in it full-time because, you know, their warranty clauses essentially state that full-time living in an RV voids their warranty. In other words, they'd say that it's being used in a manner that it wasn't designed for. And, you know, I get it. I mean, that's extra wear and tear and heavier use compared to just recreational and occasional use. So it's understandable why some brands may not cover warranty issues when you live in it full time. But I believe Jayco was the first in the production fifth wheel space to advertise that they'll warranty their units for full time living. So that's obviously a huge pro, especially if you're buying it new, given that it has a two year warranty. At the same time, to be fair, dealing with warranty issues can be very time consuming, especially the way that the RV dealers function. So really, either way, you might end up opting to mostly fix things yourself, as I try to do often. But I still like knowing that if I ever had a big issue that was too much for me to handle, you know, such as delamination or cracking in my sidewall or a failing air conditioner, right? Then it's nice to know that I'd have warranty coverage and it wouldn't be voided due to full-time living. Another pro is the overall build quality on both the Pinnacle and the North Point. Now, in my opinion, it's slightly above average within the given price point. And if you're an RV owner, then you already know that RVs are made in mass, you know, made by hand, and they can leave some quality to be desired for sure. And that's really just across the board. But I'd like to think that as you go up in price point, then you'll see a general improvement in build quality overall. Now, that's not always the case, but in my opinion, overall, Jayco seems to put out a decent product. It's not perfect by any means. In fact, I did a previous video outlining all the problems I encountered 
on my pinnacle in the first six months. So definitely check that out if you haven't already. But if you're living in something full time, you know, it's getting more use, more wear and tear across the board. And I think arguably there's a certain build quality you'll get within each price point that will deliver better. In other words, it's going to hold up better to the rigors of full time use. So I definitely think that's a pro and really not just for the pinnacle, but in general for most units as you explore the higher price points. And last pro I'll mention for full time living is the storage space. You know, I think the Pinnacle has pretty decent storage space overall. And really, I mean, with any drop frame unit, you're going to get a lot more storage in the front, right? But I personally really like the way that Jayco has laid out the storage between the extra large doors on the pass through to the propane tanks on either side and then that extra large compartment up front, you know, with the shelf in it. I just think they did a great job overall between the size of the actual compartments and then arranging them inside, finishing them out, you know in a way that really makes them very useful. Now, by the way, you'll notice some of my compartments are partially empty as I don't live in mine full time, but I can imagine if I was full time, I would really appreciate the extra storage. Which on that note, I'm going to transition to the cons. So let's talk about what aspects perhaps on the Pinnacle aren't as attractive in terms of full time RV living. And the first con I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna park on it for a while and spend a lot of time because it's related directly to the last pro I mentioned, you know, with all the great storage that you get with the Pinnacle. But the problem is, and hear me out here, you can't really fill up all that storage space and utilize it as you'll probably end up exceeding your cargo carrying capacity. And this is really, I think, probably the biggest con right now on the Pinnacle series in general. Now each floor plan within the Pinnacle and North Point lineup will have a different gross vehicle weight rating and a cargo carrying capacity. So they'll vary from floor plan to floor plan. And if you're looking at Jayco's website at the specs, you'll find most of them have a gross vehicle weight rating between 16 to 18,000 pounds and then a cargo carrying capacity between two to two and a half thousand pounds. So you might be thinking, what's the big problem with that? I mean, two to two and a half thousand pounds seems pretty decent, right? But hear me out. The problem with those numbers are those are typically figures without options, without batteries, and definitely without liquid of any kind in the tanks. In fact, the U.S. Code of Federal Regulations states that cargo carrying capacity should include full propane weight. But get this potable water in your tanks is to count towards your cargo carrying capacity. And in my Pinnacle 37 MDQS, which advertises a cargo carrying capacity of about 2,500 pounds, by the time I add in all the OEM, the factory installed options, my cargo carrying capacity is reduced to just over 1,500 pounds. Now you might be thinking still, that seems sufficient. What's the big deal, right? Well, add in a dishwasher, a washer dryer, a basement pullout tray, you know, plus a small allowance for fresh water in your tanks. And folks, I'm left with only about 790 pounds of remaining cargo carrying capacity for all my personal items. That means everything in the kitchen, you know, dishes, utensils, food in the pantry, in the refrigerator, right? Toiletries, bedding, clothes, right? All your personal items that you bring along and put in your RV. Plus, don't forget the basic RV necessities in terms of chocks, hoses, tools, all those things, you know, all that in my case must not exceed 790 pounds. Otherwise, I'm over the weight limit on my cargo carrying capacity and my gross vehicle weight rating. And folks, I'll be candid, that was a bit of a challenge for me. Now, again, I don't live in my RV full time, but we like to have it equipped in stock so that when we go on trips, we're not having to fully pack and unpack it each time. So when I moved all our stuff into the Pinnacle, I had to weigh each and every box, you know, each and every item one at a time to ensure that we'd be within those limits. And, you know, I had to take some stuff out and I couldn't put everything in the Pinnacle that I had from our last RV. Now, I was still able to get all our basic essentials. And of course, there's still items in the RV that we don't use every single trip. So, I mean, I was able to make it work. But with everything packed in, I'm pretty much right under the weight limit on all of our trips. And of course, I've weighed myself since on a CAT scale to double check my calculations. And I was actually pretty close to my estimate within 100 pounds or so. Now, this is the part of the video for those who like spreadsheets and numbers. 
What you're looking at here is the spreadsheet that I used to calculate all the weight since I knew it was going to be extra close on my pinnacle. You know, I wanted to make sure before I bought it that I wouldn't have buyer's remorse given the limited cargo carrying capacity. So if you're planning to full time in the Pinnacle or really any RV for that matter, feel free to pause the video as needed and save screenshots of my numbers to benchmark off of. However, if these numbers aren't of interest to you, feel free to fast forward. But for the rest of the gang, let me quickly walk through the spreadsheet so you can see what I'm talking about. And again, this is for the Jayco Pinnacle, the 37 MDQS. So we start out at the top here with the gross vehicle weight rating of 16,995 pounds. And so this is the absolute max that the entire rig can weigh when it's you know loaded up with all your personal belongings and everything inside of it. We can't exceed that number. So just under 17,000 pounds. Then this is the advertised unloaded vehicle weight rating here that's published on Jayco's website. And this is basically a stripped down version of the 37 MDQS. This is what it would weigh coming off the line without all your personal belongings, without water in the tanks and so forth. However, in my case, mine ended up actually weighing 15,412 pounds with all the factory installed options. So it's important to just factor that in. When you add on options like a generator or dual pane glass, all those things are gonna increase that unloaded vehicle weight that is published on the manufacturer's website, okay? And I'll go through all those in just a little bit. So that leaves me with 1,583 pounds of actual cargo carrying capacity. Now the government requires manufacturers to factor in a full fuel tank or propane tank. So in this case, we have 120 pounds of propane. So that's already factored in here to this unloaded vehicle weight, leaving us with 1,583 pounds. However, it does not include your tanks full. So let me just kind of go through some of these numbers. So first let's look at the factory installed options, 967 pounds. In other words, that's the difference between this unloaded vehicle weight rating that was published on Jayco's website, the 14, versus the 15,412 pounds, because I added essentially 967 pounds of factory options. And what are those options you might be wondering? Well, here you can see them laid out. And these are initially, these were estimates. You know, you can look up what a heat pump costs versus, or weighs rather, versus what a standard conventional air conditioner. And for me, it was five pounds heavier. You can look up what the solar panel weighs, the solar controller, all that stuff. So these are estimates that I came up with. Same thing with adding a third AC. You can look up what does that Coleman Mach third AC actually weigh. Same thing on the generator. Now with the generator, you also have to factor in adding the 60 pounds of additional propane because that is, again, part of the unloaded vehicle weight rating and the cargo carrying capacity remaining. The government actually requires those propane tanks to be full. And you can see some of the other options here. The dual pane glass was probably the hardest one I had to estimate on because I really couldn't find any guidelines for what that would be. But I estimated 225 pounds in the end to have that extra layer of glass on all the windows. I think there's 16 windows total. So you can see my total estimate, this was before I ordered the unit, was 938 pounds for all these different factory options totaled up together. And you can see I was a little bit off because according to the weights from Jayco, all the factory installed options ended up being 967 pounds, but not too bad. So, I mean, if you're looking at options, you can do something similar here on your unit to figure out what is that going to take away ultimately from your cargo carrying capacity, right? So again, cargo carrying capacity for my case, 1,583 pounds remaining. But then I came back and added some, what I'm going to call aftermarket installed options, like a washer, dryer, dishwasher, those sorts of things. And so you can see right here, the washer, dryer, 160 pounds. Lithium batteries, 36 pounds combined. Dishwasher, 120 pounds and so forth. Then I actually removed some things in the process of adding the washer dryer, the dishwasher. There was some heavy shelving and drawers and stuff in those spaces. So I actually took off 40 pounds there. So that was kind of a gain there. And then there's some small miscellaneous items that I added in that factored into 35 pounds. So total, I added 461 pounds of aftermarket installed options, things that are going to be more or less permanent in the RV, okay? Then I also wanna factor in a water allowance. Remember, you've got a 75 gallon freshwater tank on the Pinnacle 37 MDQS. There's no way I'm gonna be able to fill that thing up and still get all my personal belongings. So I opted to have a modest 25 gallons of freshwater in that tank. 
8.3 gallons or 8.3 pounds per gallon rather, plus factor in your hot water heater, which has a capacity of 10 gallons, plus if you have the drinking water, the filtered drinking water system, that's another five gallon jug. So that totals 332 pounds of fresh water, okay? So that leaves me then with a little under 800 pounds for all my personal items and everything else that's gonna be added into the RV. So when I moved in all my personal belongings, that's what you're looking at right here. I kind of put it under categories to give you an idea within each area of the RV, how much everything weighed. So you can see here the pass-through storage, everything that went down there. You know, these are RV essentials, chairs, tables, games, tools, all those things ended up weighing 215 pounds, right? Then in the kitchen, all those things that go in your kitchen cabinets and your pantry, 140 pounds. Then in the family room, kind of in that rear living space, 55 pounds. Then in the mid bunk in the loft area, about 25 pounds. Then in the master bedroom, about 55 pounds. In the bathroom, 25 pounds. And then just some general office things, about 15 pounds. So all together, the personal belongings that I actually moved into the RV that are, you know, more or less permanent, I leave them in there each time, totaled up to 530 pounds. All right, so scrolling back up, that leaves us with 260 pounds, literally that's it, 260 pounds before we'll exceed this gross vehicle weight rating. So this 260 pounds is really important because there are certain things that I put into the RV that I take out and put in just for certain trips. You know, we're talking food that goes in the refrigerator, perishables maybe that go in the pantry, or how about all your clothes, right? Your clothes, your kids' clothes. So that means we've got 260 pounds that we can allocate for food, perishables, clothing on each and every trip. And that's a pretty not modest you know, number right there. I mean, sometimes we have to say no to certain things to stay within that number. But that is the final number, 260 pounds that I'm pulling in and out of the fifth wheel each time. So you can see how close that figure is and why I needed to make a spreadsheet so I can make sure I'm staying within the gross vehicle weight rating up there of the 16,995 pounds. So I hope that's helpful if you're trying to get an idea of what is humanly possible on the weight side. I mean, I think we've got everything we need for our trips in the RV, generally speaking. I mean, sure, I had to pull out some items, but I can't think of anything significant or vital, right? But I am curious for those watching, if you've ever weighed your personal items in the RV or calculated those weights alone, you know, how do my numbers compare to yours? Again, I have 530 pounds of personal belongings that I kind of more or less permanently leave in the RV and then about 260 pounds of items that are changing from trip to trip. So how does that compare to your situation? I mean, for me, I thought it was a bit of a challenge personally, but I'm guessing there are others out there that have even less cargo carrying capacity and can do far better than I did. So definitely drop a note in the comments below and let everyone know how much your personal items weighed. You know, basically everything you brought into your RV minus more permanent items like the washer, dryer, or dishwasher. You know, I'd love to hear where all those numbers end up across the RV community. But I want to discuss the topic of cargo carrying capacity and gross vehicle weight rating a little bit more as this really is an issue, not just on the Pinnacle, but a lot of RVs built today. I mean, once you start getting options on them, you really start eating into that cargo carrying capacity and that can really limit how much stuff you can actually bring along with you. Now, I'd love to see Jayco increase the gross vehicle weight rating on the Pinnacle models like mine from you know 17,000 to perhaps 18,000 or even 18 and a half thousand. But I wanna be clear that I was able to make it work even at the 16,995 gross vehicle weight rating on my 37 MDQS. Now, if you've got more personal items than I mentioned, you know, more than 790 pounds worth in my case, or you need to take more fresh water with you or wastewater for that matter, then you're going to have to make some hard choices ultimately, you know, with the options. Maybe you'll have to forgo conveniences such as the third AC or a generator or dual pane windows. You know, all those options can add up really quickly. Or you may have to take a completely different path. I mean, if cargo carrying capacity is really important to you, then I'd recommend looking more into the toy hauler space where typically you get triple axles and then the cargo carrying capacity can be well north of 3,000 or even 4,000 pounds in the end. 
And as I've said several times already, I don't live in my Pinnacle full-time, but when I imagine living in an RV full-time, you know, the thought of packing everything I own, or at least what I need, and then some, you know, even if I had a storage unit for items I didn't use frequently, I still think it might be easier to start out with a toy hauler to get more feasible cargo carrying capacity. And maybe I'm wrong there as I don't full time, you know, maybe you just find yourself adjusting and taking along less stuff over time. But I'm just putting all this out there for consideration. And again, I definitely love to hear your thoughts on this as well in the comments below, especially if you're already full time. Now back to the cons, I've got just a couple more. And the first one I'll touch on is related to the weights. And that is the pin weight. So as you know, the pin weight is how much weight the RV transfers to your truck from the kingpin when you're all hitched up. And I actually was really surprised how much heavier the pin weight was on my 37 MDQS after it was fully loaded compared to the number that Jayco publishes on the website, which is about 3,300 pounds. Now, obviously that number is without all your personal items, plus it doesn't factor in options like a generator or a washer dryer, right? But that being said, when I first weighed my 37 MDQS after it was fully loaded, my gross vehicle weight came back right at just under 17,000 pounds. So we're good there. But my pin weight, get this folks, the pin weight was at a staggering 4,400 pounds. That's right, that's over a thousand pounds heavier than the estimated pin weight from Jayco. And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense as I have the Onan generator up front in the nose, right? Then I've got the washer dryer combo in the nose, plus all the weight of the items in the basement storage. All that ends up transferring more to the truck compared to the trailer axles. In fact, the weight on the trailer axles on my 37 MDQS alone it ended up being 12,600 pounds, which those are on 14K combined axles. So really the truck is carrying a pretty good chunk of the weight. I mean, 4,400 pounds, that is a lot of weight there. I mean, that's almost a thousand pounds more than a Jeep Wrangler JK if you set it on the back of your truck. That's a lot of weight. Now, thankfully, I have enough payload on my one-ton dually, but just barely. I mean, its payload maxes out just north of 5,000 pounds, so with all my family and miscellaneous items, we've only got a couple hundred pounds to spare before we'd be over the truck's gross vehicle weight rating. So the point I'm trying to make here is you may not want to pull all that weight if you're full-timing. I've heard several folks that full-time build the case for why they prefer a one-ton single rear-wheel truck since that might be your only vehicle and you want to get access to places where maybe a dually can't fit. So you've just got to factor that in, you know, that pin weight and make sure that you've got the payload capacity to support it. I mean, I was definitely surprised when I weighed in at 4,400 pounds. Well, that's enough on the weights and stuff, but let me touch briefly on a couple other cons concerning the Pinnacle and full-time living. All right, so I mentioned the two-year warranty previously in the pros, but let me counter that with a con. And I'll just share my personal experience working with Jayco so far. And that is when you do need parts under warranty, no matter how small or expensive they are, they don't seem to be willing to send those parts directly to you like a lot of the other RV brands. I remember I had a Grand Design Reflection travel trailer years ago where if I called them for an LED light that went bad or a broken shade, you know, they just quickly sent out a replacement direct to me without me ever having to interact with a local dealer. And it was quick, it was seamless. But with Jayco, my experience so far has been they make you go through a dealer for parts under warranty, no exceptions, right? Now I understand if something is a higher ticket item like your air conditioner or your TV goes bad, right? then the manufacturer probably isn't gonna send you a new AC or TV site unseen. But I'm thinking if it's smaller parts, you know, under $100 in value, it seems reasonable for RV manufacturers like Jayco to just send them direct to customers, not only out of respect for the customer's time, but also for their bottom line. I mean, not having to send them to a dealer and compensate the dealer, it saves them money. Plus, if you're full-timing in an RV, you may not have easy access to a dealer in the first place. And you know, oftentimes it's just more convenient to have parts shipped directly to you. So in my opinion, that is a con when it comes to the pinnacle and full-time living compared to other brands. But at the same time, I think this is one thing that Jayco can explore and you know discuss among their leadership and perhaps make changes to become more customer-centric in this area, hopefully sooner than later. 
Another con, in my opinion, and this one's pretty minor, but I'll mention it anyway, and that is the tank sizes, especially for the gray water. You know, really on the pinnacle, they're just average overall. And I don't think this is a deal breaker by any means for full-time RVing. As I imagine a lot of folks that full-time, they end up stationary for a while where you've got full hookups with sewer. But I do see quite a few full-time RVers here on YouTube that seem to travel bi-weekly. And, you know, sometimes they're staying in sites that don't have sewer hookups. And so in those cases, it'd certainly be nice to have larger gray and waste tanks. I mean, sometimes, unless I really can serve, I can barely make four to five days with the whole family without sewer hookups before the gray tanks are full here on my pinnacle. So it'd be nice if the gray tanks combined were perhaps closer to 100 to 120 gallons of capacity. But this really goes back to the cargo carrying capacity is you can't put in tanks that large in a unit that doesn't have the cargo carrying capacity to support it. So again, just another plug to increase the cargo carrying capacity. You know, I don't want to be too hard on this one as like I mentioned, they're really just average capacity overall. I mean, until you get into toy haulers, it's rare to find such large capacities on the tanks, but I still think it would be nice to have a little bit more capacity. All right, so those are the pros and cons I came up with for full timing in the Jayco Pinnacle. I mean, really, at the end of the day, I think it's a great choice personally, just with the caveat of understanding the limited cargo carrying capacity that I talked about extensively. You know, maybe one day Jayco will increase those numbers. I think if they did, the Pinnacle could easily become a knockout for full time RVing. But either way, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments below. Did I leave out any pros and cons? Or are there other brands that you can think of, perhaps around the same price point, that would be better alternatives to the Pinnacle? We'll definitely drop a comment below so we can all help each other out. As always, thanks for watching.